Hello world of YouTube. I'm here today to deliver to you my first HD discography review. That did not mean to rhyme that, but um... I'm doing one that was also requested by a few people on my Mike Portnoy video a couple of months ago, and I'm putting it up now because this is the one year anniversary, or like the remembrance day of their drummer's passing. I'm talking about Avenged Sevenfold, and for those of you who don't listen to Avenged Sevenfold, they're a band that's changed up their style very much so over their five albums. They started off as kind of a metalcore band with elements incorporated from different genres. Then they kind of transformed into a hard rock band, and now they're kind of a mishmash of so many different things. And, yeah, it's I don't mind the band. I, I do enjoy the band quite a bit. Uh, I had the pleasure to see them live. I had the pleasure in seeing them live. Sadly, it was not with the Rev. It was with Mike Portnoy, but he did a great job. He played the band's catalog well, and I do enjoy the newest album. But I'll talk about that when that time comes. Uh, like I said before, five albums, so why don't we get started? And the first song they released was called Sounding the Seventh Trumpet, which was released back in 2001. And the one complaint I have about this album that some will complain about, some won't, is the vocals. I don't like it when Matt Shadows kind of sounds like he's trying to be Randy Blythe's younger brother in a metalcore band. I'm not used to it, first off. Some people got into the band through their early stuff. I got into them through City of Evil, which is an album that separates their fan base, but I really I don't like it whenever he does this. It doesn't sound good to me. I do like when he sings. He sounds very good when he sings on this album. And... They open the album very well with the guitar by um, Zacky Vengeance. It sounds really good, and I, I, it's not that I hate this album. I just dislike it for the most part. I mean, they do surprise me in, in the fact that they keep some elements that they use throughout their whole career, like the piano. To have an album be as heavy as they, this can be for a metalcore band, and to use piano like they do. Very, you know, astounding to me. It's It meshes well. They make it mesh very, very well. And I dig it. I dig the way that this sounds. I just don't like when Matt Shadow sings or growls, screams, however you want to say it. I don't like it when he does that. It doesn't sound good to me when he does it. He has a weird voice when he does it. And this song right here, actually, Darkness Surrounding, has an awesome drum section. This part. It's awesome. When I first heard it, it blew me away, because it was crazy. It was just nuts. And I... It, it, the drums are like that throughout this album, and it's just... It, it's mind-blowing how awesome they are. The rest of the band plays the song fairly well. The bass is very hard on this album, which is something that couldn't be said in some of their later stuff. Um, especially on the song Streets, which is actually my favorite song. Uh, Streets kind of sounds like a song The Offspring would do, sound-wise. Maybe not the vocals, or maybe not the heaviness, but the melody and the way it's constructed. It kind of sounds like a pop-punky, rooted song. And I really dig it. And, yeah, that's my favorite song. And the second album they released is called Wake in the Fallen, and that was released back in 2003. And the one thing I do have to say about this album is that it does change a bit of their sound. The vocals are cleaner for, um... A majority of certain songs. But there are other songs. It does go back to the sounding of the seventh trumpet style of screaming. And I don't dig it. But he doesn't do it as much. So that's fine. They have some pretty heavy stuff on here too. Like there are sections where it's just brutal. Like on Eternal Rest. And hold on. Desecrate Through Reverence. I was making sure I was getting that right this time. And it just gets. It has more of the epicness to it. There, there's more of an epicness to the sound of the sound, like on Radiant Eclipse, where it's just this big build-up. And there's songs like, I Won't See You Tonight, which is just like, or at least I Won't See You Tonight Part 1, which is just this roller coaster of awesomeness. And it's got my favorite intro out of the two that have intros. This one, for Waking the Fallen, creates more ambience, and it's just a bigger epic of an intro. And... That's just, I think that was the focus, to make it more epic. They do draw from the first album, but they expand it. 
to an epic sound. Now, it's my favorite out of the two Metalcore albums, but it's still not my favorite album. Um, I would rank it probably... Thir it's tied for third with the self-titled, because it's City of Evil, The Nightmare, then the tie with this and the self-titled, and then Sounding the Seventh Trumpet as my favorite. Um, now, my favorite song on the album is... Either I Won't See You Tonight Part 1 or Unholy Confessions, because I do like Unholy Confessions. It's It was a good single. It's a good song. So, yeah. And the third album they released is called City of Evil, which was released back in 2005. And this is my favorite album, and it also has my favorite song on it by them. And this album is my favorite because they did it right. They have... The ballads are strong ballads. They're still really rocking while adapting their sound and maintaining the heaviness that they're known for. They have more of a, they develop more of a hard rock sound in this album, and it's a huge change from the even from the first album, which was only two albums ago. And this is an album that can divide fans. There were those who are really true to the first two albums, really love the first two albums, and don't really like the three that proceed. And then there are people like me who like the first two albums, but love the next three albums. This album and the, the next two. And I get why people who are fans of the first two don't like this. I it just I'm not one of those people. I'm sorry, I, I can't just listen to Matt Randy blithing it. It just doesn't cut it for me. Um, they kind of go biker with some of the songs, like Sidewinder, the opening, kind of gives me that desert feel. And it's interesting. Uh, I I like the, the, I like the songs. None of the songs really seem too long, even though they have some of the longer, some of the longer songs in their catalog, like Strength of the World, Betrayed, Sidewinder, all these songs are long, but they don't feel just like they're going on and on and on. Um, the one complaint I do have about this album is that they develop something that I don't like about Avenged Sevenfold, and that and their solo, and that's their solo structure. The fact that they start up every solo like the same twin guitar, wow, wow. A lot of their solos start up like that from this point on. That kind of bothers me. It's, I mean, it's not bad. They are talented players. It just kind of, I don't know. It it bothers me. My favorite song on the album is Blinded in Chains. It just it has that intense opening and it's a fantastic song. So yeah, Blinded in Chains, favorite song. And the fourth album they released was self-titled and it was released back in 2007. And out of the three albums from their hard rock era of being a band, this is my least favorite for a few reasons. I like the first half of the album up to around the Bompton Cocktail, Unbound the Wild Ride region, then it kind of falters, then it picks itself back up with a little piece of heaven, I really like that song, and then it fails with Dear God. I just don't like that song. It's a country song, and I just don't, I don't get it. I mean, it kind of comes out of left field, I just don't like the song. For, the, for a ballad or for like a softer song, it really fails for me. Um, I will point out one thing, if they do play Afterlife, or when they played Afterlife live, the Rev has backing vocals in that, and it sent a chill up my back, it was chilling to hear him sing without him being there. That's a personal story I wanted to share about this album with my with myself. Um, that, that is one song that I feel maybe a little overplayed by them, Afterlife. I do like the song, but seriously, when this album came out, they, they wouldn't give it a rest. It, it's not my favorite song on the album by any means. It is a good song, but just give it a rest. The opening song, Critical Acclaim, is a massive song. It's it's up there on the on the greatest opening tracks in modern metal music. They do a really good job with the organ fading into the heaviness, and his vocals get Anselmo-y. His vocals get Anselmo-y 
on critical acclaim, and I like it. I dig the direction that they're going towards, because you can see the pro progression to Nightmare like this, and I dig it a lot. I just wish that it didn't get a little eh by around halfway through the album. A Little Piece of Heaven does pick it up, though. That song is great. I do like it. I like the story it tells. It's interesting. Although, I am an actor who did uh, musicals and stuff. That's probably why I like it. I don't know a lot of people who like the song who listen to Avenged Sevenfold. I like the song, though. I think it's really solid. I heard the Rev wrote it, which is cool. But yeah, I completely love that song. That's the one redeeming factor of the tail end of the album. This is also the last album to feature the Rev, which is sad. I, I miss uh, Jimmy, even though I didn't know him personally. Uh, I did admire his drum work. He was a phenomenal drummer, and he is deeply missed. So yeah, that's, that's a bummer. But yes, favorite song is Critical Acclaim. It's just, it's amazing. It's a great song. Also, something I forgot to mention way back when I reviewed this earlier this year, or actually it was late last year, um, the song Lost that was playing in the review has auto-tune in it, which is just not necessary. No. That does not help the back half of the album at all. Um, it's just bad. It's so bad. It's really just... Eh not needed at all. I uh, wanted to add that little bit in to the review months later. But, um, the dog is barking now, so um, like I said before, favorite song is still critical acclaim. But yeah. And the fifth album they released was called Nightmare, which was released this year. And I love this album. Uh, it made my top 11 of the year. Even though it was number 10, I do greatly love this album. Um, and every time I listen to it, I find more appreciation for it. Like this song, Fiction. I have grown in love with this piano opening. I mean, I thought it was cool the first time, but I mean... I love this piano opening. It is just... It's beautiful. It's beautifully constructed. It's beautifully played. And I only found out recently that the Rev did vocals on this song. I, I thought the vocals were different, but I didn't know it was actually Jimmy. That was weird to hear that with him being... It, it was like the afterlife experience. It was just weird. And... It's just... It's weird. You can hear the pain in Matt's voice on certain songs. Like on uh, Tonight the World Dies, that chorus. I mean, he's just shouting. And I commend them very much so for making this album. For just putting themselves through this passing and still making this album is very commendable to them. And I, I've grown higher respect for this band since they released this album. I haven't, I don't, I never hated the band. I've just grown more of a respect for them for making this album during this time of their life. It's very, time during this time of their life, it's, it's very commendable. Mike Portnoy does drums on it, um, and I love Portnoy's work, so... Yeah, he, he does a good job. It, it's weird, because it's his style. You can definitely tell. It's Portnoy playing. He's just one of those drummers where you're like, you're listening. That's Portnoy. And the Rev was similar. He had his own style of playing. So it's weird to hear them without the Rev style. Um, the, the song... The songs have a weird feeling to them when, I, when you listen to them, or at least for me. It just has that feeling of just joyful sorrow. I don't know if anyone out there feels the same thing when they listen to it. It it just has a lot of ups and downs, and it feels very just emotional. And for a good reason, I mean, when they wrote it. But they have a song in here like God Hates Us, their heaviest song to date. I know it's heavier than the first two albums. God Hates Us is a brutal track. It's Pantera-esque. I love that song, by the way. And it's just crazy. The first time I heard it, I had to stop and replay that opening to it, because it's soft, and then it, it's like critical acclaim, but like halfway through the album, so it comes out of nowhere. Uh, the, the one song in here I feel that kind of goes on a bit too long is Save Me. Even though the Rev does vocals on it, 
it just kind of, it feels like it just kind of eggs on and on and on. It is a good track, it's just kind of a bit too much. Uh, one, uh, one song that, that kind of also was like this, this is where this is going, was Victim. Because that has an opening that's pretty heavy, hold on. That opening, you think something heavy is coming, like at least something dark. But then it just takes an immediate turn to a, a softer song, but like not dark. It's more uplifting sounding. And it has the gospel singer in it and everything. That's one song that kind of made me kind of go, what? Where, where, where did that go? A lot of the songs on here are soft, too. Like, it's not like Avenged Sevenfold soft or City of Evil soft. It's its own brand. They do have the heavy, fast-paced song, for a but it, quite a bit of it is, is softer stuff. And I don't, I don't blame them for that. They, they are mourning, or they were mourning. They probably still are mourning because it's got to be tough to be playing on stage without the rev it's it's gotta be weird but um yeah i dig this album it's one of my favorites of the year my favorite song is god hates us because that song is just brutal it makes up for any lack of fast pace for the most part it's a brutal song and if they actually go in that direction i will be heavily surprised but yeah that is event sevenfold if you are intrigued by any of the songs that I said were my favorites and you've never heard them before, they're linked in the under thingy. And, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this. I... I wanted to do this for the longest time. But I wanted to give albums more of a listen. Because I do listen to them, but... There's some albums I just don't haven't listened to that much, like Waking the Fall and Sounding the Seven Trumpet. And when I said I was going to make it, I hadn't listened to them for that much, so I listened to the crap out of this album. And, yeah. I just wanted to give it time. And then when this, when it came to December, I was like, I still haven't done this discography review. I'll put it up on the 28th. That makes sense. So I hope you enjoyed it. And you guys have good days, live situations, have good ones. And I will catch you guys later. Peace.